While I formerly referred to myself as a leftist, I no longer do so. But I still refer to myself as a progressive. Why is that? Well, word, well words are important. I think, I think much of the conflict to be found in political circles is derived from misunderstanding and misinterpretation of politically related words. Unfortunately, it is difficult to define words. Yes, there are dictionaries, but those are still written by fallible humans, and as such, they can, be, they can write false definitions to words. How are we to know what is true and accurate de definitions to a word? Definitions are derived from a number of et et etymological factors. Contemporary and historical usage, dissection of the component parts of a word, such as the prefix and suffix, and finally the origin story for a word. It is for the last, last reason that I have abandoned leftism. The word left, in the political sense, likely originates from the French Revolution. The French revolutionaries sat to the left of the speaker of the French Le Legislative Assembly, while the supporters of King Louis XVI sat, sat to the speaker's right. The leftists of the French Revolution were, to put it bluntly, brutal. The reign of terror was not a hyperbolic term. Citizens could, and often did, face the guillotine solely due to a rumor that they were merely said a kind word about the deposed monarchy or addressed someone as Monsieur or Mademoiselle instead of the required address of citizen. While it may be correctly claimed that the redistribution of wealth that came from the revolution was progressive, that's where the progressive aspects ended and the regression began. What began with the French Revolution has carried through to, today, to today's leftism. Some have incorrectly claimed that the woke mob cancel culture and social media censorship is inconsistent with leftist values. Those claims are incorrect because canceling and censorship was rampant in the French Revolution just as it is today in today's and among the leftists. Only in the revolution it was heads that were literally cancelled, but today it's only the careers that were cancelled by the woke mob of today's cancel culture version of the Reign of Terror. The term progressive, on the other hand, isn't tied to a specific degenerative degenerate historical historical event. The word progressive derives from the word progress, as in to improve. In the political sense, to improve is to make the world a better place, to put it simplistically. The mistake leftists have historically made is to make the unsafe assumption that the ends of, of ending any perceived injustice against the oppressed justifies the means and ending of the injustice will outweigh any other injustices brought upon the oppressors or anyone getting in the way of the social justice warriors. And, and along the way, those leftist social justice war warriors maintain the hu hubris of assuming they could never become the oppressors, even though that is the inevitable, ironic result of their hubris. So the, the bullied become the bullies. And that's the big problem with, with uh, leftism. They believe the end justifies the means, whatever that means is. And uh, so here we are today with the woke mob cancel cu culture who become, instead of progressives, they're re regressives. They're intolerant of anybody that has a differing opinion from theirs. And if anybody differs from their opinion, then they cancel them. Just as the French revolutionaries, the original Jacobins, canceled people's heads, but today they cancel people's careers. And so, yeah, I have, I've aban totally abandoned the leftism, and I was all, I've also have abandoned, abandoned Marxism, and I've, I've abandoned the Democratic Party. So those are all outgrowths, uh, specific forms of the leftist political 
movement that began with the French Revolution. So that's where I stand today. I still I still identify as a progressive because that just means I'm I believe in making the world a better place. Um, however, that entails you know, but I don't think it makes a world a better place for to exist in a intellectually an in, in intellectual wasteland in academia where if someone's careers can be ruined just because they disagree with whoever now has the power who which is now the this uh the woke mob uh, can cancel culture so they're the ones that have the power so then they and then they're very intolerant of anybody that has any opinion that differs from theirs so then so that's my conclusion is that is so so yeah I, I don't think it's a progressive world where anybody that has a differing opinion from that woke mob is could lose their careers just because their opinion differs from those that are currently are in power so so yeah that that's yeah that's not a progressive world a progressive world allows for a lively intellectual debate and encourages that a lively intellectual debate and, and uh, realizes once there is a good open debate then there's a certain confidence and faith that the just progressive position will prevail because people generally recognize people are generally good so they're going to recognize what is the good position so there's no need to censor no need to cancel once all the arguments are heard and pe the generally good people recognize what is the good and just position that results in a in progress in the world where the world improves and becomes a better place so the, that that's why it's so important that a, an open debate free of censorship is allowed that we can allow people to hear out each side and come to then they'll recognize what is the good and just side in that debate that's the progressive world not the woke mob censor censorship happy world where anybody that differs from the the, the opinion of those that are in power have due to the corrupting power of power itself you end up instead of having a better world you have a regressive world where that is run by inevitably corrupt people because they've been corrupted by the power that they now have and so that they then censor anybody that has a position that will threaten that position of power that now has full of all these people that are have been corrupted regardless of what their original progressive goals that they may have originally had but now they are corrupt because of the absolute power that they have garnered from their their position from the hubris that they have that they think and that they they are they can never become corrupt because they're working under the assumption that that's well that that could never happen because they originally had this goal of being trying to do good and so when yeah when once they have that that kind of uh that kind of hubris that they're 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 immune from their cannot be face that kind of uh, degradation that's when they're most vulnerable it's when you, you kind of, when you think you're invincible that's when you 
when you're and you and enter in a risky scenario and you think you're invincible, that's when they're the most greatest danger is. So if somebody's like say riding down down a riding on a motorcycle at hundred miles an hour down the down the highway and they think they're invincible, instead of take having respecting the danger, that's when they're that's when they're actually most in danger of crashing because they do not respect what kind of danger is involved. That's what's happened, I think, with this woke, woke mob. They, they don't respect the danger of power, the corrupting power of power itself. And, that, and as a result, they're much more easily to fall victim to that very corruption. And they're going to crash into a world of sinister corruption. And they'll become what they were trying to overthrow. They themselves become what they're trying to end. And they don't even realize it as it's happening. So yes, we, I think it's very important to abandon the leftist tradition and not think that it's inherently progressive when it's anything but. I think, I think when, when one thing that happens is people tend to confuse something like the like say the hippie movement or the flower children movement of the late 60s you know, and the beatniks of the earlier in the 60s um, and, and thinking that assuming that there's an unsafe assumption that they, well, those were leftists and I don't think that's the case at all those were not leftists um, as a general rule they're neither left nor right. That's what I, I, I do not identify as a right-wing person either. I'm neither left nor right. Um, I, 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 have, I find a lot of appeal in those hippies from the 60s. Um, but yeah, those, they were neither left nor right. You don't have to be. It's uh, either one. It's so, so much of politics, politics today are stuck in the French Revolution mindset. You're stuck in the idea that you have to be either a um, member of the, the leftists, Jacobins, or the uh, defenders of the crown of the Louis the Sixteenth and their uh, opulence and filthy rich uh, selfishness of, of the uh, Louis and Marie Antoinette. Yeah, that was not good either. Um, but neither were the uh, Jacob Jacobins, uh, the French revolutionaries, the leftists. They were horrid as well. As blood ran in the streets as the guillotine kept on, as they ordered everybody that might possibly disagree with them having their heads chopped off. And that's the way we are, we're seeing now with the left today's leftists, the woke mob, cancel culture. There's anybody that disagrees with them, they have their uh, careers chopped off, ended. So it's just a continuation from that French Revolution mindset, and that we need to. We we're all really we're stuck in. It started in 1789, and. Uh, over well over 200 years later, we still have that same same mindset where the of a false choice of either left or right, when we should be choosing neither, just be focus on being progressive, trying to make the world a better place. Whatever whatever that political philosophy is, applied political philosophy, go with that regardless of whether it fits in the category of left or right, not even considering that possible, not even just do away entirely with that, the, that false choice of left or right, just focus on what is the ideal, what is the, what is the best of all possible worlds in terms of a applied political philosophy. And that's what we should be choosing and going, and going through an, uh, an open debate about that, what what that what the best of all possible 
applied political philosophies are. And um, that's my position, and that's why I'm neither left nor right, but I still identify as a progressive. And that's what I'm focusing on. And that's what that's why I wanted to uh, present this. So, yeah, I just, I just I began this video reading off an essay, a short essay I just recently wrote, and then I, after that, I've been winging it since. So, if, if you're, that's why I, I hope I get my message out there. And if you're still watching, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.